wasteland. Tune those ham radios and hide your chems because you're listening to the Pip Boys, a Fallout podcast where your hosts, Josh and Austin, cover all things Fallout. Today, we continue our quest to rank each and every vault in the Fallout universe by just how horrifying we find them. Yes, you heard that correct. We are back to ranking the vaults. After previously, I was sick with uh, radiation poisoning, but I am back. I didn't happen again. I'm no longer sick. It's okay. Uh, we, we made two in a row. Uh, lucky for me. Um, so this week, Josh, well, first, before I get in there, how you doing, Josh? What, what's, doing well. What's, uh, what's doing, the update? doing fantastic, man. I'm excited to talk with more Fallout. My God, do I love it. <laughs> that's why we made the podcast baby yes, hey, boy that's what we are so we got we got mm-hmm. alec on the ones and twos thank you once again alec for a few weeks ago filling in he is like literally the a champ there's a lot for shared screens behind the scenes too so send him MVP. some sweetness you love on twitter just an fyi we are pre-recording this one before the holidays so if there is any big fallout news that is happening happened uh between what's today the 18th <laughs> and when this goes up that is why we're not talking about it god could, could you imagine we we go on hiatus. Everyone's home. Fucking Christmas Day. Todd Howard's like, "Hey, here's Fallout One Two remake in creation engine." <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro! Could you imagine? <laughs> we missed the biggest fucking Fallout news of the year. For the record, Alec, I, I yep, was sorry. I was gonna bring that up, but just just to be clear, if you need any more evidence to show that Alec is always on top of his game, like yes, that is very true. We are pre-recording, so thank you for that reminder, Alec. I appreciate. Oh, okay. If you couldn't so, tell from the same clothes from the last episode. Don't, yeah. just don't, don't give it away. Don't give it away, all right? You don't have to keep bringing that stuff up, damn it. All right, God. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I like right. to ruin the illusion. Okay? <laughs> Someone's give the do people it, what yeah. they want. Literally go what? watch six months straight of Shared Screens content where I wear the Dude. same hoodie every fucking, every recording. And only no Chris joke. mentioned it like one time before no no joke we, i was just logging on to youtube just to, like you know pass some time and i saw one of our old videos from two years ago yeah and it was the thumbnail was i don't remember what the title was but the thumbnail was kevin james as kratos oh, yeah alec dude. do you remember this <laughs> i remember making that one yes yeah. <laughs> i don't, remember I don't what the know podcast what it was i don't but... know what it was about but dude that made me laugh i just <laughs> belly laugh Thank like you. a like Thank a you. like a deep belly laugh yeah. like oh man that was really good so before we get into Vault 13, which will be the vault of today's episode. We're going to talk about a little icebreaker here, uh, skills. So in the past, we've talked about um, like our like our special uh, mm-hmm. stats, right? And we were like, oh, what do we usually prioritize? Prioritize. Um, well, this time, and I have a little picture on the dock for those who need a little help. Uh, Alec or Josh, if you want to look at the picture, you can. Mm-hmm. Um, what skills we prioritize? Um, and I will, I'll start just to get out there. I, I've mentioned in the past for another podcast where like I try, I like to try and be relative to like who I am. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm no fun. Cause like people are like, I play as a female and I do like a behemoth and all that like weird shit where like, I'm going to be strong. Like mm-hmm. that's just not me. I'm, I'm boring, I guess. So I like to prioritize sneak. Cause I feel like if I were in the situation, I'm not a big dude. I would mm-hmm. have to be sneaky. I would have to just use what I got. I'm, I'm thin. I'm gangly. I can, I can utilize that. Right. Yeah. So I always prioritize sneak. I always prioritize lock pick. Because I when I, I hate when I see something and I can't fucking get into it. Yes. Right, that drives me up the wall. I'm just like, nope, I'm not like not doing that. And then I also prioritize um, probably small guns or barter because I love going to a shop. Right, you just find or like a, yeah. a wandering caravan and being like, I know for a fact that I can use or speech. Like I can <laughs> use a speech check or something like that. Just something that gives me all your shit. Make yeah. this easier on me. Right. Um, but yeah, and I, I usually prioritize like the smaller weapons. I don't love to use the big weapons because again, like mm-hmm. if I'm out there, I'm not using a fat man. Then no, no, yeah. no, that's that's a fun way to play the game. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. And I always have one in the back pocket just in case. But I'm yeah. I'm prioritizing like like a like a small pistol. That's usually how, yeah. how I go, or like a small energy weapon. That's usually mm-hmm. how I how I go. So how about you, Josh or, or Alec? Feel free to tune in uh, whenever you feel like it as well. So um, yeah, I'm a very I'm a very tactile person. So like. Um, I, I go based on like utility and like what I'm what I'm constantly using. So lockpick is a massive one. I always prioritize Hell yeah. that and um, uh, hacking, right? Just to to get into those science, science or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, just to help uh, figure out those codes a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Those are two I, I, I main see. Line. I usually do that eventually. Like I, I yeah. mentioned before, like in, when we did the special, where like I have my like main ones, and then the first time I level up, I do like strength, right? Yeah. 
uh, science is one of those ones where the, it's the first thing I do. I just know relative to me, I'm a fucking idiot. So like I'd oh, be like, tick, 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 and be like, I don't yeah. fucking know. Right. <laughs> uh, Alt F, uh, you know, yeah. uh, trying to do whatever I, whatever I know, which is next to nothing. But, but yeah, but like, uh, especially in like three, like I, the last thing I want is to get locked out of a uh, terminal and not be able to access whatever I need in there for whatever quest line. Like I just don't want to alter my progress, sure. but I always go there. And then, uh, yeah, I find a lot of the best, like, character guns uh, seem to be pistols. Like, mm-hmm. like that's my that's my shit, right? When you, especially when you find, like, a legendary pistol and it, like, mm-hmm. ha- like looks cool and has, like, almost, like, a cool backstory to it. Like, that's that, yeah. that's that shit I love, right? Uh, best. Shout out uh, to, sorry to interrupt, but there's a gun in Fallout 3 called the Terrible mm-hmm. Shotgun. Yes, and I this thing that fucking one. rocks. It not a small rips, gun, dude. Not a not a small gun. I, I think it is technically mm-hmm. it would be categorized as a big gun, technically. Yeah. But I I love that thing. I, yeah. I I'm always sporting the pistol, whatever I can find, the best pistol, the best SMG, or yeah. whatever fucking thing I can find, similar to that. Um, yeah. But I whenever I find the terrible shotgun, that's right in the in the back pocket, right. baby. I'm yeah. using that as soon as I need to. Death claw. Oh, mm-hmm. terrible shotgun is coming out, baby. Yeah. The my my go to one. That I'll like anytime I start a new playthrough, I'll mainline it to this pistol almost. Um, is sure. I want to say it's the the Punisher. Um, oh, I might be I getting the name vaguely wrong. remember this. It's it's basically James Bond slash Archer's right. like, silence Walter yeah. PPK. Yep, that thing rips, dude. Does it? Does that one? Does the guy in Megaton have that? No, that's uh, a different one, right? I can't remember. No, because it's his form, right? Irk. Uh, it's, I think it's in some bunker in four, but like okay. I, I mainline it there. You get the small guns, you fucking sure. increase the caliber, right? Little clip mm-hmm. size, but you are just, you'll get to a point where silence pistol, you're just fucking shot. Dudes. You're just. It's always a cool feeling, right? Especially if like you eventually prioritize sneak, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And they're exactly. like, oh, oh yeah. shit. And it's like it's, it's always like, it's always a good feeling. Yes, it, it's my go-to weapon. You'll uh, like get to the point where you roll up on a, a fucking uh, brute super mutant, and you're just sure. the whole clip just da, 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 da. by no. the time they find you, they're yeah. at least close to death. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Right, like that thing's just great. So always mm-hmm. going to small guns. And then like I don't know, I'm trying to do a little bit of melee, but I'm not the biggest melee guy, right? I always I'm try to, and then I give up. <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent. i was like this this if i'm not using the punisher i'm using like a, a like a, a big gun like a shoddy so let me put sure. something into that or mm-hmm. uh like explosives right but even i was, then, I was gonna like, say shout out shout out to explosives because i always want to like i love oh shit i'm running from a group of people just dropping yeah. landmines <laughs> right right i never think of that but uh it, it's always grenades for me and then i start to like yeah. up explosives and then i was like I fucking hate the grenade system in this game. Like, you can't just fucking write bumper R1 yeah. grenade like you can Call of Duty. Like, you have to go manually select it in the fucking pit bull and then toss <laughs> it, right? Or yep. send it to hot. Is, is it, is it like that in that, 4 too? I thought 4 was um, different. I could be wrong. 4 but. might be different, but 4, it still just doesn't feel great. Like, you sure. still have to no, put the green. Yeah. Four has, like, you, like the favorites thing that you can, like, kind of quick select it. Yeah. Three, three has favorites, too, but I, I do think it's more quick and streamlined in four. If, that, yes. if that's kind of what we're, what we're, yeah. Doing but it's, it's still not as fast like, as just fucking pressing a button. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No one plays Fallout to be like, it's, it's COD. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, Even though, like, sometimes I do, I do wish, like, the game, like, not that it's COD, but I, I wish the gun gameplay felt better in all of these games at like, least somewhat to par yeah yes yes 100 percent. and so i always give up on grenades and explosives and like, I'd rather sure. just i just think explosives this, are fun yeah you you get into a certain situation where you're just fucking layering mines yeah. or just hucking grenades at yeah. something just to see what happened it, they're fun right so yeah I'll, I'll then eventually like go into barter or like uh isn't is a uh, strong back one is that, is that one that's like a perk oh yeah like yeah, a perk yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah. So it may, mainly lock picking, science, and then give me that goddamn small guns, man. Hell yeah! I, like I, I was we're very same, similar. We're very yeah. similar. I like that. I, like that. I was doing the, um, the same thing in my short time in New Vegas, just because I was like, dude, fucking cowboy game. We're all these revolvers, dude. Like fuck yes. Let me just be yeah. six shoot Pete. You know, like, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Have my six shooter. So like, all the more reason to just pop small guns there. 
I always want to just put it to easy, like mm-hmm. really easy, and then just do an unarmed one. Like just oh, yeah. up my my unarmed to like all the way up as much as I can and yeah. just go out and punch and fools. Like, I, I always think about that. That'd be dope. I never do it, but yeah. I want to. <laughs> Alec, you got anything? Uh, yeah. So like you guys, I do prioritize lock picking. Just you know, yeah. same same reason. Like it's just so frustrating when you come across something that you just can't do. Right. Um, and it still happens sometimes from time to time because, like, especially oh, early exactly. game, they, they yep. purposefully will layer stuff in there. Like, oh, you got to come back for this. Yeah. I'm like, fuck right. you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I usually go to- more towards the energy weapons and big guns just because I do like sure. more of the assault rifle, yeah. uh, laser kind of thing. <laughs> Another fun um, one. More fun yeah. for me than yeah. practical, but, like, that's just me personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because, like I said, I've played mostly just Fallout 4. Right. Um, Fair enough. So... The crafting system in that is there's a lot of options with the lasers. Sure. Oh yeah, dude. Especially like when you're like starting to put on like a three round burst where like you're like yep. you're adding a cycler on the fucking laser mm-hmm. gun and it's just... <laughs> okay. Say what you want about Fallout Four. Shout out to the crafting. Crafting's pretty freaking good. Oh, yeah. right? yeah. I spent so much time with that crafting. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. And pretty so cool. when you when you got fucking energy weapons up and and you got the gun mods, dude. You're just fucking slaying in energy weapons like there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Fucking Pretty cool. Laser pistols, laser rifles, all that shit. It rips, dude. I love that <laughs> shit. Yep. What else you got? Uh, and then probably, yeah, just some speech. Uh, just because, yeah. like I said, Shout I've been... Uh, ever since I played uh, Outer Worlds, just I've realized how fun having a, just a really high persuasion yeah. uh, can be in games. Just but that's the like... like like title there yeah exactly yeah and just being able to just literally just talk your ways out of combat situations yeah i think the um, just like focusing on speech and follow three made me do that in like every rpg ever like if there's something mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. ilk i'm like oh yeah oh yeah baby i'm going up to where if i can talk my way out of this yeah and then quick save and kill you anyway <laughs> just, yeah, right. just to see but yeah, yep. that's, that's where i'm at yep mm-hmm. and then yeah just like josh uh some science or hacking whatever kind of skill that is just right. yeah, yeah just because it's it's yeah. just yeah. Terminal sound is is just one of those like almost ASMR like, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, dude. I love when you finally I, I actually kinda like okay, it depends on what I'm doing. Like I, if I'm in a hurry about a quest, I don't want to be sitting here at this terminal for a while. But sometimes yeah. I like just sitting there and be like, ah, okay, let's see. And then just you know, let's try this one. Nope. Okay, let's try this one. Mm-hmm. And then like in three, I think you would have to leave before you did it. You failed four times, then go back into it. Because if you fail four times, you're locked out or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But in, in four, I think it would just lock you out for like fifteen seconds or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I too am like also pretty big on the speech. Uh, I can't remember what playthrough of three I was on, but I remember one like I just leveled up r- getting right into Megaton and mm. like I had I had the points to allocate and uh, I allocated my points and then I went up and I uh, talked to, is it Braun? Is Braun the quest giver for the, the nuke in Megaton? Or is Burke. that? No, uh, Burke, Burke. I, think I, I know what you meant. I know yes. what you meant. Yes, Burke. Uh, and I can't remember what the what the speech check is there, but I had like, oh, the, it's high. It's like it, ninety or some shit. Yes, but uh, I think I think I was trying to convince him to give not me to mo- money to set it off, or maybe not to do it. I can't remember. I can't remember if it was good karma or bad karma. I think because I think there are two options, if I remember correctly. One is like just give me more money and I'll fucking yeah. do it, and that's like fifty. And yeah. I think the one like you don't want to do this, blah blah. This is a bad idea. That's like oh, yeah. eighty-five to ninety. I think like it's like yeah. oh shit, you you do not want me to get that option. You want me to have fun I, with I, this. I think <laughs> I think it's that one because I, I remember it seeming impossible, and like I tried it, and I was like, hey, like you know, fuck off, like don't do this, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I I don't want to ha- look. I don't want beef with you and Mister. Pennyworth or Pennington, whatever the fuck that dude's name is. Lucas Sims? Is that his name? The um, sheriff? No, not not Sims. Oh, uh, you're Penny talking Tower. about P- Penny Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, I don't look. I don't want beef with you and the Penny Tower gang. But I also, I don't <laughs> want to blow up this fucking town of yeah. innocent people. Please not a monster. And so I, <laughs> I failed it. Right, loaded back into my quick save, like loading into make a ton. Uh, got the chance to reallocate it. Put it all in the speech. Walked back. Fucking was like, hey. Don't do it. And he's like, no, fuck you. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, load back, reallocate the points, walk up to him. And he's like, you know what? You got a point. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. And he just walks away. And I was like, there you go, Megaton. I just saved you. Like, You're welcome, ladies yeah, and gents. I, ju- I just passed the speech check because I put all my points into yeah. the speech. And that's when I learned like the power of 
like properly allocating points and how good and quick save. <laughs> yes, and quick save, but also just like how charisma and the the speech. Yep. They yep. really changed the outcome of the game. Yeah. And then, and then of course, you go back for the negative karma, and the, you're using that speech to be like, "Fuck you, give me 500 caps, <laughs> give me way more money." And yeah, just, and then uh, undeal, baby, blow that shit up. Yeah, <laughs> you go to Penn, Penning Tower to look at it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, but also so that that quest, because uh, when you go into town, I almost instinctively always put points into repair because yeah. you need to repair oh, the like yeah, little, yeah, the leaks. Yeah, yeah. So then I do that quest, and then I get to Burke. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so then I have I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. So I go back and yeah. And it, it's like it's low enough level to where like you pass that quest and you just max out the next level anyway. So like I I, yep. I told him I was like, hey, like don't do it. He leaves, you know, a quest complete, right? Mm-hmm. Get the XP, right? It's only like what, 20 XP and you're already at your next level. You're at level four already mm-hmm. by that point in the game yeah. or something like that. And it's like, hey, what if I just put my points into repair right now? And I'll not only tell this dude to not do it, but then go repair like the, yep. the nuke anyways yeah Did that, the, the, the repair points you need aren't super high either yeah, i just always instinctively yeah. think i do that and like fuck i forgot about burke and then right. I, and there, yeah yeah. Okay. yeah so like being able to just allocate the points properly tell burke to fuck off fix the nuke anyways and like megaton i'm your god i'm your mayor yeah. right now and they're like hey, i should be the guy really sitting hot. in the freaking nuke nuke water or whatever. yeah yeah uh-huh. exactly <laughs> cherish me yeah over the, the the church of adam or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. um i also this is one of those things where I'm like, fuck you, Fallout. Like, I, it's fun because it's, it's part of the system, but it's like, you can kill Burke. Um, yeah. Well, you get a shootout with Burke, right? Because you, like, tell Lucas Sims or whatever. One, mm-hmm. uh, Lucas Sims al- almost always dies. I've got to where he doesn't, but he almost always dies for me, and I take yeah. his duster and his hat every time. <laughs> like, you, you look cool, so I'm taking your shit yeah. <laughs> every time. Um, but you can also kill Burke, and then you go find his house, and it's still locked in red. I'm like, dude, right. the guy's dead. Yeah. He's gone. Let me in this bitch. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Especially when, like, you go tell, like, uh, Sims that you, like, you told him to fuck off and you basically saved the town, and then it's still, yep. like, red. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, dude offered me 25 caps to new <laughs> you. And you're gonna, caps. like, you're gonna fucking <laughs> arrest me and give me negative karma for just going in his house and looking at his baseball cards? Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? <laughs> like it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. I don't remember if you actually get his key from killing him or <laughs> or not, but I, I don't think you do, which seems weird. Yeah. But I think canonically maybe Sims has it. I don't know. Uh, Doesn't matter. Anyway, I always thought that was that was funny where it's <laughs> like, well, this man is dead and I still can't sneak into his apartment. <laughs> That's in Megaton, which is also <laughs> a funny thing to say. Okay, that was a good little icebreaker there where we talked about our skills. Now, getting into Vault 13. Now, before we get into this, there is a few things I want to mention before we get into Vault 13. One, this is not a super eventful vault. No. I'm just going to say that right off, the, right off the rip. Two, I'm not going to go into every single detail because, and like you're watching the podcast, you're like, oh, that's what, that's what we're about. This is pretty much the story of Fallout 1. Like the, the main crux of the vault mm-hmm. in Fallout 1. So I'm going to spoil a decent part of it but right. at a, there's a, at a certain point i'm just kind of kind of stop and say like a one sentence summary of what happens after that right because I, right. I i do want to give out there like what happens in this vault what comes from it but i don't want to just spoil the first game mm-hmm. does that make sense? is that fair yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay here we go initially vault 13 was a control group for the societal preservation program intended to be sealed until the subjects were needed by the Enclave, according to Dick Richardson. No idea who that man is. According to the Fallout Bible, however, the purpose of Vault 13 was to remain closed for 200 years as a study of prolonged isolation. Fuck that. I... We've, we're going to see some doozies going forward, but something about that one pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole point is this, is just keep them in there forever? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> What's the point of the vault then? Yeah. Uh, uh, one of my notes here, one of the most ambitious and most expensive vaults to date, thanks to its size. It could hold a maximum of 1,000 occupants, Josh. Damn. 1,000 people. Usually Damn. a vault, like what? Maybe a max of like 100, yeah. maybe, oh, like, and that's pushing yeah. it, right? Yeah. So this one was like very ambitious and large. Ten times the size, yeah. Yeah. This one costs like, I don't remember the exact number, but it was nearing 500 billion Five hundred billion dollars. That's a lot of caps. That's, that's, that's a lot, lot of battle caps, baby. That's a lot of pre-war cash. 
Pre-war money. All right. Sometime before December 5th, 2161, Vault 13's water purification ship began to malfunction. For those who know anything about Fallout, this is like a running gag theme of kind of what Fallout is. The Overseer began to send out Vault 13 dwellers into the wasteland to find a replacement ship. Among those sent out to search for a replacement ship were Ed and Talius. Those are characters in Fallout 1. The first perished right outside the door. Oof. The latter was captured by Nightkin at Necropolis and later dipped. Do you remember what Nightkin are, Josh? No. Are they are they begging for Rio New Vegas? Do you remember me bringing up a character by the name of Lily? Yes. Lily is a super mutant, but right, they're right. a nightkin. They're like oh, a diff- they're like blue super blue. mutants, essentially. Okay. I don't remember the, exactly how they differ, but I know <laughs> they use stealth boys. Oh, okay. So think a different colored super mutant that yeah. are invisible. That's Fuck terrifying. That. <laughs> yeah. <Fuck> that. <laughs> Screw that. Yeah. But so one uh died right outside the door. I don't remember exactly what the cause was, but in the other was captured by Nightkin at Necropolis and later dipped. Only mm-hmm. to mutate into a ghoul like mutant like Harold. <clears throat> he wound up with the followers of the apocalypse far away from the vault. The final dweller selected by the overseer for the mission was a future hero vault dweller. Like the main character, you essentially in follow up one and we we mentioned harold up here mm-hmm. if we don't talk about harold in a vault i might just do an episode just about harold because do you know who harold the tree oh yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah. harold the tree is a really fucking interesting character That's a so we might quest. just do a little a little spin-off episode of that one. I'd be, yeah absolutely yeah okay continue on on December 5th, 2161, at 720, that's pretty specific. At 721, they left the vault with a 10 millimeter pistol, some supplies, and the location of Vault 15. And as someone who played the first like five to eight ish hours of Fallout 1, I can con- confirm that, that yeah, that's pretty much what you get. You get a pistol and a few junk. Right. <laughs> just so that's it. The water chip finally failed at that point, leaving the vault with just 150 days worth of water reserves. After brave, braving the dangers of New California, the dweller finally returned with the chip in February 2162, recovering it from Vault 12 beneath Necropolis, succeeding where Talius had failed. The Overseer was pleased, in particular because of the rebel faction rising in the vault demanding to leave. Upon reviewing the Vault Dweller's report, particularly the mutants at Necropolis, he calculated that the mutant population was far too uniform to be the result of random chance. He concluded, this is all the overseer, he concluded that there had to be a factory producing them at a startling rate. Determining it was a threat to the vault, the overseer once more sent the dweller into the wasteland as 13's more capable agent. Sorry, I had to burp. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the vault dweller succeeded in locating and assassinating the leader of the mutant army, the master, which is also a really key character, and destroying his co- command center, the cathedral, in March 2162. Now you're probably asking yourself, Austin, this isn't about the vault anymore. I'll get there. On April 20th, 2162, the Vault Dweller completed his mission, killing the lieutenant and destroying the Mariposa military base containing the FEV vats used to create the mutants. FEV, also a really, really important thing uh, in Fallout, which FEV, the virus, is what creates super mutants. Uh, So it's a really important thing. The Vault Dweller returned to Vault 13 on May 10th, 2162. The Overseer met them outside the vault door, the vault blast door, and rather than let him back inside as the hero, banished them into the wasteland. He was convinced that the dweller's presence would convince his fellow dwellers to seek their fortune in the wasteland and abandon the vault, endangering the control group experiment, which was to have them be in prolonged isolation. (laughs) He believed he was saving the vault. However, the Vault 13 population was disgusted by the overseer's decision. A faction under Teresa and Lyle rebelled against him. Many left the vault in protest. Those who remained believed that those who left perished in the waste and arrested the overseer. He was tried and sentenced to death. (laughs) The people of this vault sentenced the overseer to death. And after that, they said, no one will ever be an overseer again. They were like, nope, that position is abolished. We're not doing that. My last note here. The vault would later become a den for intelligent death claws manufactured by the Enclave. The Enclave would eventually kill them all and reclaim the vault. So the Enclave is the one who kind of like wanted the vault anyway. Right. And wanted this experiment to happen because this is this is Vault Tech, but I think it's primarily Enclave. Right. And then all the shit went ha- all the shit went down. Uh, the main character of Fallout One does all the bidding of the Overseer. The Overseer says "fuck you." The people of the Vault say, "Hey, that's unfair," and they kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, very that Bioshock. Is, 
Yeah. Very very Bioshock? Oh, I Bioshock's yeah. one of those games I never actually played all the way through. So I don't even really know the plot. Of I know there's like a there's <laughs> like a, like a moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. But so that is Vault 13. And again, there is more to this vault to an extent. I would say most of the thing I'm not telling you is like little nitpicks or little tidbits about it that would spoil more of Fallout 1. But honestly, I just spoiled a lot of Fallout 1 for you. So, yeah. but I just don't want to spoil the whole fucking thing is why I don't want to just continue on about this. So right. Well, go, go on and play Fallout 1. And I would love for them to remake Fallout 1. But yes. Um, uh, Josh, what do you think? Uh, I just got a whole lot of new information there uh, because what my research only contained uh, the shit with the, with the Deathclaw faction. I didn't know any of this prior shit. Oh, okay. Um, so basically, so what do you know about the Deathclaw faction? Um, uh, what other information can you dump on me? Uh, you know, uh, just that they're, uh, you know, they have a, a variant of a mutation that makes them like super intelligent. They yep. seem yeah. pretty noble. They're they're purposely manufactured by the Enclave. Uh, yeah, and then just and then just wiped out. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so they like, uh, I don't know. They like they seem pretty noble. Like they have their paths, their rules, their tradition. Right. They're um, almost very like forthcoming to the. Uh, to the protagonist, the mm-hmm. the wastelander there, but uh, oh, yeah, they definitely weren't the enemy. Yes, yeah, yeah, like exactly. they would have been if you provoked them, but they weren't. Right. They weren't your enemy. Exactly, but like yeah. getting all that, I was like, holy shit! I would love to play this in a modern Fallout game. Totally, like, like yeah, re- we'll remake it in Creation Engine two and fucking give me this quest line. Like, this all the death even if that's shit, even if that's all it is. Yeah. Like just give me this quest line and the rest of it is just kind of yeah. like make make it a closed sort of open world like mm-hmm. homage but not mm-hmm. actually you know what I mean? Yeah, the idea of speaking to an intelligent deathclaw. Hell yeah. And you say hell yeah. Dude. That was that was literally my thoughts when reading it. Like mm-hmm. when I don't I, remember, I think everything. canonically the intelligent deathclaw the only one that has a name his name is like Mama. I uh, think there are a couple with, with names. Uh, okay. With names, I believe, but yeah, no, they're all, um, all there. They have their, they're almost like a unit. They all have their certain functions and uh, the way they like yep. play uh, their roles into. They're just uh, living their lives. They're yeah. just like you. You made us. Now we're gonna, you know, start our own little pack here and try to live exactly. our lives. Yeah, and they like put uh, put their trust in you, and you put your trust in them. Like, just seems uh seems very cool uh, in terms of like the isolation and the enclave portion of that sure. that like that to me seems like my read in it is they are doing extreme isolation to break out the weak and then keep the strong for the enclave like to initiate them into the mm-hmm. enclave like they're basically just creating soldiers at that point right like who See, can withstand the extreme I isolation? agree with you. I agree with you with the sentiment. What I don't think works is 200 years, Josh. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. You're going like, <laughs> to... So, you, the, at the very end of it, right, you maybe yeah. have someone who's like 50? Yeah. And they've only been there possibly. for 50... Only there in that vault for 50 years, right? These people yeah. that are here, maybe you have some kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's not like... I mean, I guess the way it would work is like you would learn things from your ancestors or whatever that was right. like how living only in this vault is. Well, but I feel like you're you're only going to get people who only know that world for like the 25, 50 years yeah, been in there. It's not yeah. going to be like a 200 year existence. You know what I mean? The, the generational like gap there isn't enough almost, right? Like you're going to breed out, like you're going to get rid of the weak uh, first, right? And then, sure. you know, the strong will remain and fucking breed more strong kids. But like even then it's like not enough to maybe like. I don't yeah. know, have two, three generations of fucking warriors and just Yeah. That's kinda of what I'm getting at too. Like I yeah. feel like the, the the it was a long shot to even like even remotely go in their favor. And it's still it's yeah. still fucked up, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying like mm-hmm. even from the get go, not that it was like like how the last one we talked about, uh nineteen, how it was kinda like fucked from the start just because it yeah. was like a not controlled. Yeah. This one wasn't wasn't this one was controlled, but it almost didn't have a purpose. Like yeah. it, I just feel like the end goal was kind of unobtainable, but Hundred percent, yeah. So I definitely, I think they're assholes, and then uh, all that shit with the with the overseer and the wastelander, absolutely fucked that. All the on <laughs> shit, you know. There's just there's a lot of messed up stuff happening there. I yeah, I don't feel like I necessarily have the full story here. Uh, I would definitely love to explore this again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in in a game, in a modern game that's not yep. on a, a Windows. Night. Fucking computer, you know. And like, again, like I said, I trade. I played the first like five to eight hours. It was mm-hmm. rough. 
all right yeah. i'm playing this game because i love fallout right i'm, I'm yeah. in it because i just i want to experience to an extent what mm-hmm. made fallout one magic and i get it right. i do i really do see the magic in it mm-hmm. but i'm like old game is old baby yeah <laughs> like game give, give me this in a modern version and again just give me the yeah. main quest like i don't need yeah. anything crazy exactly just give me like a like a 10 hour experience mm-hmm. this, like, the, this like this would definitely win you know a modern yep. fallout quest line totally agree okay so ranking the overseers right now we have Braun at one mr house at two and red slash blue as number three this mm-hmm. overseer he had a name i don't recall what it is in my in my notes we're just gonna call him overseer uh 13 overseer but what do we think was um, he worse than the red and blue overseer because i don't know i don't yeah i don't know either i mean the uh, the thing with the red and blue overseer is like, you know, one of them one of them knows that it's an experiment on one of them mm-hmm. is kept blind, right? And to know that you're like purposefully inflicting psychosis and like fucking with throughout people. A, a long period of time, whereas yeah, I feel like hmm, the brunt of like the crime, quote unquote, committed by this overseer, right, mm-hmm. was that one decision to be like fuck you, to yeah. The- the lone wanderer right yeah i i definitely think that like puts him like he's already doing some fucked up shit by just running a vault where their point is just isolation right like that's yep. already that's already fucked up but then to you know send this guy on this quest to uh, you know, fix the water purification all this shit uh put him through that and then when he gets back you know like hey we're all about isolation and you probably have stories about the wasteland and how good mm-hmm. it is. And you're Even fucking- before that, he, sh- he shows up back the first time and he said, yeah. Hey, go out there and murder that dude. Yeah. Like go, no, no, go out there and murder the master or whatever the hell. Cause he's a threat to this. Yeah. And I think there's a push and pull personally, uh, with this overseer because one, he's mm-hmm. in charge of 500 people. I know I said a right. thousand, the thousand is the maximum occupancy, right? right. But, like if they had to do five, a thousand, they could, but I think mm-hmm. the quote, the, the plan was 500 that's still right. a lot of fucking people lot of people. whereas like the other overseers are probably only in charge of like we said like maybe 50 to 100 yeah. like around that right mm-hmm. so i feel like that adds a level of like responsibility to this overseer right but i also feel like in terms of the experiment isolation yes that is awful like that that's terrible i mm-hmm. don't think it compares to purposefully causing paranoia yeah does that does that check out to you yeah, like I agree. Like this, this guy, we at least have like more, more of a name and a face uh, to like and like understand his motivations, like a little bit more. But yeah, I think mm, I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tough. It, it it is tough. I think I think like if we're ranking them on how fucked up they are, which I think I yeah I think like I think isolation is fucked up. But then on top of that, we have the other motivations like his his evil schemes to maintain that life uh, that lifestyle right whether mm-hmm. it's killing uh killing the master or whether it's mm-hmm. you know banning the dude and not letting him come back in there like i think i think he's doing more fucked up shit to keep the 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 thing going than the than the other two overseers like i think i think, I think the there's a little bit more I, there. i'm with you i completely yeah. agree i think the because in my opinion, they're almost tied, right? Yeah. Or like, because the, I feel like the purposefully inducing the paranoia one for mm-hmm. Vault 19 is pretty fucked up, right? Yeah. And then you go to 19 with the isolation. And I feel like if I had to pick one off of just those blanket statements, I choose mm-hmm. the paranoia, right? Because I feel like that right. that's more day by day stuff, yeah. right? But- Whereas this one, because he's in charge of so many people and he mm-hmm. makes huge decisions that change the outcome of this vault for clearly the negative regardless yeah. of the experiment at all because at one point i think he's trying to save his own ass right it, like it's it stated like i'm protecting my experiment yeah. not my people right mm-hmm. yeah. so i think the tiebreaker is there are so many people that he's letting down rather than the paranoia uh-huh. one being like 25 to 50 so yeah. i think the tiebreaker goes to 13 being more fucked up than 19 yeah. you agree Oh yeah, I agree. I, I think, do think it's close though. Yeah. It it yeah, for me it's it's those extra it's those extra like you know, like he he only gives a shit about this experiment, right? He mm-hmm. calls them the experiment, he does 
uh, like fucked yeah. up things to keep it going, it, right? At least in in thirteen. Wait, which one? Yeah. Was it? At uh, least in, no, sorry. 19. At least in thirteen, the one overseer, the other one was he was trying, That's right? 19. Yeah, yeah. In nine, in he 19, was trying. Yeah, in nineteen, like they're like the the guy who doesn't know as much is still like, let's let's figure this out. Versus 13. he realizes early on, like, nah. Yeah. Nah, this, nah, we ain't doing yeah, this. Yeah, versus nah, nah. fucking 13 is just a scumbag all the way through. And mm-hmm. fucking Even though, like, the one in 19 didn't exactly handle it well. Because he still didn't yeah. tell anyone. He was just like, I'm going to yeah. figure this out myself. And I, I mm-hmm. think I hear an elevator or whatever. Yeah. Um, I It was just one of those things where it's like, he at least tried. <laughs> yeah. The effort yeah. was there. Not that that makes it any better for, like, the conclusion of said vault. But right. for what we are ranking, I feel like. Yeah, I think thirteen is more fucked up than yeah. I think uh, 19. I think the overseer to thirteen is more fucked up. I think the premise of uh, nineteen is more fucked up than thirteen. If that makes sense, I I agree. So we're putting overseer thirteen above Over red slash blue, red versus yep. blue. Yeah. Um. Okay. Bam in there. Now, just the vault in general, you said 19 is more fucked up than uh, 13, right? Yeah. So what about vault 21? Um, No, because we have uh, have 21 under 19. Yep, I'm asking if if 13 is more fucked up than 21. Um, Yeah. Uh, Yeah, absolutely, I'd say so. Because again, uh, like we talked about last episode, like equilibrium, right? Uh, you know, there, there's a just way to, uh, you know, rule that society and that society is based on luck and gambling, which isn't as bad as just being like, hey, here's just pure isolation. We're going to break you and build you back together so you can be a fucking soldier for the enclave or whatever sure. the, fuck the purpose was, right? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to start putting little notes on the vaults, <laughs> like vault 12, I'm going to put. Tranquility Delane or Brawn, yeah. and then 19, I'm going to put Red vs. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? Because I feel like we're, yeah. we're going to eventually have a list here. So like, 13, which one was 21? 13, <laughs> Death Claw, uh, Death Claw Enclave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. I'll, put, I'll put, probably put like Follow 1 slash Death Claw Enclave or something. Yeah. Like that. Yep, so just the definitive list for Overseers. Number one, Brawn is the most fucked up still. Following him is Mr. House. Oh, Brawn is Vault 112. Mr. House is Vault 21. Mm-hmm. Three... Uh, is the 13 overseer. I think he has a name. Forgive me. I might do some research after that and find out. Yeah. He's, he's like the main, in, not, not the main antagonist of uh, Fallout 1, but regardless. And then number four is the red versus blue overseer. Uh, ranking the vaults, uh, the most fucked up vault, 112. We kind of agree on that one. Bronze vault, sure. pretty, pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. And then number two, we have vault 19, the paranoia. So like the, the vault itself, still a little more fucked up than uh, the overseer itself when comparing mm-hmm. all of them. Number three, we have Vault 13. And then number four, we have Vault 21, the gambling vault. I can see the gambling vault being like, this one's pretty good. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. can see that, I can see that last thing. If I, if I had to pick one to live in, absolutely. As of right now, it's, it's definitely Vault 21, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. So this has been the Pit Boys, a Fallout podcast where we talk all things Fallout, but currently ranking the vaults by how horrifying we find them. So thank you for watching. I'm going to wave goodbye to the camera. See you.